Hello guys, welcome back to Tax Riders and the Freefem series. In this video, we want to talk about commonly used techniques in Freefem for visualization as well as input output operations. Let's go for it. So the things that I want to show you in this video are, you know, known to you if you have already followed the series. In previous episodes, we use these techniques for visualization, for post-processing, as well as some of the input-output operations. But still, I want to compile them all together. These are the commonly used techniques when you work with freeform scripts. And uh, similar to previous videos, we have some examples here. Uh, we go through them one by one. So I open this uh, the directory in a text editor and then uh, we go to the example. So the first example is quite simple. We used it almost in every single video of the Freefem series. We had some plot functions that is actually used for, uh, you know, a very basic visualization of uh, the fi finite element spaces and also mesh entities. But in this case, I want to just draw your attention to an extension we have here. So you are able to visualize vectors as well. And in this case, it is, uh, you know, we, we visualize U, the mesh, U, and then we have some vectors being uh, calculated based on the individual components of U and V, which are uh, actually some functions defined using X and Y. So I go to the directory, I want to run the examples. So freeform example one, oops, sorry. Example one, I turn off verbosity, I press enter, and this is what, uh, this is something that may be new. This is not something we discussed in previous videos. We have some vectors in each degrees of freedom of space, because we have degrees of freedom on nodes. We have space P1. This is something we already discussed, and this is the way that you can use uh, the plot function. As, as we discussed, we can have the values, we have you can have the feeling and a lot of things by pressing F, V and also M for visualizing the mesh. But a better option always can be like the VDK files or the output that you can visualize using Paraview. And then, uh, you know, we had already a dedicated series in Paraview. But in this case, we want to have like uh, the same functions defined in a previous example. So this is the same. We need to load the IOVTK uh, external module or plugin, let's say. And then uh, one extra thing we need to specify the, the order, let's say. Like if it is a first order, second order, by defining uh you know an array int int and then we have order one 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 and it means that the first output which is in this case u so this is the mesh first we need to provide it with the name of the vtu file and then a mesh and then the list of the entities that we want to have in the vtk file so in this case it says the first one is one the second one is one and the third one is also one the first order let's say but you can always change any of these to zero meaning that it would be a P0 or let's say cell wise or element wise output. But in this case, it means that the results are written on notes. You know, these are things that we have already discussed. And then when you want to have the vector as the output, because this is two, uh, a 2D case, you need to specify the third uh, component to be zero. Otherwise you cannot visualize it in Paraview as a vector entity. And then we have the data name, the names that you will have in Paraview. So in this case, I say U, V and vector, and then you pass the order to, to the file as well. So, uh, let's run the second example, example two. And after that, we will have this VTU file that we can visualize using Paraview. So I open Paraview, I can uh, like drag drop the file here, or I can open it, or I could have directly passed it to the command as a command line argument, it doesn't matter. So I press apply, and then you can see that we have UV vector and label as something defined using element wise. So in this case, you see that we have like the, the label defined on each node, 
we have only one label here so it's not something that we can see but uh, anyway this icon shows that it is a cell wise in the terminology of Paraview it is a cell wise data and these are point wise data so you we have this one we this one and then this is actually the vector so I'm I'm showing the magnitude of the vector but you can what we can do is for example I go here and then uh, I can plot a glyph actually on, on it so as simple as that so the direction orientation array vector and scale array also vector and I press apply and then you can see that we have uh, these things also very similar to the, to what we had as the plot function we can have it here as well but uh, as you know Paraview is one of the best post-processing tools so for sure uh, with this uh, simple function you can always have your finite element functions written to a VDK file that you can visualize using Paraview so this is actually a very important thing that we use it uh, we have already used it in a couple of videos in Tux Riders but we will use it uh, for any kind of visualization in the future and then uh, let's see uh, let's have a look at some of IO operations, input output operations. So for a simple text file, you can have like OF stream for the output and IF stream for the input. So we have like the file name is in this case it's file txt. I write this uh, floating point number and the integer number to it, as simple as this, use similar to C out, and then I flush the output to be sure that the, the values are written because I want to immediately read it here. So if you don't want to immediately read it, this is not necessary. And then I create a kind of a, a variable of type I of stream on it, file in, and then the, this is the inverse. This is, you know, this is the shift operator kind of, let's say, uh, that uh, redirects A to file out. And in this case, we want to redirect input from file in to C and D. And then I write C and D on a screen and it should they should have the same value of A and B but this is something we obtain via the I.O. operations. So uh, example three, and as you can see, these are the values. And then we have also file txt here. So I can have like the output of file txt. And as you can see, they are written in the same file with one space in between. That is actually something needed for file in to read the values correctly. And then uh, we can have also some arrays or finite element variables written to a disk. So in this case, I define a mesh 1010 and then a, a space P1 of type P1 actually. And then I define X equals X. So the coordinates, the value of X at each node is written, is stored in the finite element function. And then I have OF stream file test in this case. You know, I use another notation. You see that I do not have like file flush or uh, the OF stream flush in this case. And that's because I have used uh, a kind of scope definition uh, notation in this case. So curly brackets, and it means that the file variable destroys after this. And it means that the file is automatically closed. So I open a file test.txt and I then and then I go through each degrees of freedom of P1, which is the element, which is which are in the node, sorry. And then I extract the value of X at each node and I write it to the file. And then uh, after this, I define another function, another variable, let's say, of, of the type finite element function space, and then uh, which is named check X. And, wanna, and I want to read the values written to test.txt back to it and checking if it is uh, performed correctly by plotting the variable using the plot function. So I do that again by going through all the degrees of freedom and reading from the file back to the variable that we want to plot. And in this case, you can see that I write them in each line because I pass endo so that we have the values written uh, per file. And this is uh, very similar to space. You know, this file needs some separators. And in this case, this is uh, a new line. In the previous case, that was a space. So I run this example, example four. 
and you can see that this is plot of check x that was initialized by this input output operation on the test.txt. So you can see that these are the degrees of freedom of the mesh of the finite element space and then uh, we read it back to check x. But you know there is another way of doing this much simpler so freeform can take care of that if you want and you can see that this example 4 and 5 are the same but instead of having a loop here I pass the array itself to the file. And in this case, you know, this is a kind of operation that you can do on arrays and matrices as well. But uh, what Freeform does is actually stores at the first line uh, the size of the array and then writes the values. You can see the file later on. This is test array txt that will be created. And then the same output, the same uh, format can be used, is expected for input for performing the input operation in this case. So I read directly from the file to the check X and then I plot it. So let's plot this one. Let's run example five and then we check the output file. So this is example. This is check X variable being plotted on the screen. So it works correctly. The values are, uh, you know, the X value of each node. Uh, because the size of the mesh is between 0 and 1. And then this is the kind of output that FreeFem has written to the disk. So this is a format that internally used by FreeFem, which is not something spe specific. It is a fixed number of uh, values per row. And then the total number of uh, the points that we have in the first line. So you can see that FreeFem takes care of that all the operations let's say and this is a kind of input output that you can use for storing your finite element functions that can be a solution of a sim uh, simulation or equation and then you can read it later on for example if you want to have uh, like a feature in your code that resumes a simulation after interruption this is the way to do it you can store the solution in a file directly pass the finite element function to that to the file and then read it back into another one. An example six is actually uh, a demonstration of a better feature in FreeFem for doing this. So for example, for the case that I said, you want to load a solution of a simulation in another simulation, or you want to store your finite element uh, function to file. And that's actually soul file. A soul file is in the mEdit format we used already mEdit for uh, you know for plotting for visualization but in this case uh, i want to show you another application of that which is the format soul.soul which is uh, really as simple as calling save soul and red soul so you define your things and then you save the solution in this case x to a soul file which is again a text file, very similar to the file that we created in example five. But in this case, it can be used for with other external tools. This is actually a universal format and it can be also a binary uh, file. But in this example, I, uh, I didn't put the binary things, but it is really as simple as providing some extra flags and changing the file extension. And then I have check X and red soul to the array because it gives you back it returns an array and then I uh, plot the check x which should give me uh, the same output as uh, the previous two examples. So these three examples were actually for you to see the different techniques that you can have in uh, for for input and output operations of finite element functions. But I personally you always use the soul file because this is something built in and then as I said this is a universal format so I can if I want I can use it in other tools as well. An example 7 is something we already discussed in the first video but, but because it is related to input and output I put it again here with more sophisticated example that is part of a tool we developed this tool and this file for reading parameters. So this is a big freeform code that has like a user interface on top of it. And the user interface interacts with the backend with the freeform code via this 
command line argument. And this is just part of it, you know, the, the parameters, there are much more, but uh, you can see that we have different things. These are the things that we used for configuring the simulation. And as you can see, we have some, uh, these are, this is the name of the flag. So this is the thing that we can run. This is a typical command to run it. And uh, by doing this, we can specify like the, uh, we can replace or override the, the default value. So in this case, you can see that instead of output output, which is the name of the VDK file, for example, in this case, we can have test. And if we have the default value of write VDK to one, but we can override it via the command line interface, command line arguments to zero. And uh, same for the integer and also the floating point numbers, which are represented as real in FreeFab. So in this case, if I run the example without providing the flags, you see that it prints the default values. Sorry, so I run it like this. So these are just the default values that they were, they were here, nothing is provided. But if I start to provide some of them or all of them, in this case, I wanna do that for, for all of them. If I pass, the values to override, then I can interact with the code and you can see that the script has now the new values that can be used later on to perform some operations. So if you go to this, uh, this, this file, you can see that there are a lot of uh, parameters defined. And this is actually, as I told you, part of another software. Uh, but this is a mechanism that you can use to interact with FreeFem codes and programs. And then the last example is related to, you know, Again, some file operations, but in this case, mesh entities. We have already discussed about reading mesh files, external mesh files, but because this is very relevant to IO, I put it in this video, that is uh, actually a feature that allows you to save the mesh. So you define it, you create a mesh inside FreeFem, like all those interesting meshes we created in the second and third video, and then you can save them to a mesh file that can be used in any other program, can be visualized, can be manipulated by some other tools. So in this case, I show you that we create a cube and then we uh, remove part of it, let's say, and then we save a mesh to a mesh file that can be visualized later on with another tool. So let's, let me run example eight, turning off verbosity. So now you can see that we have the test mesh here. So this file is written for us. And then for example, I can pass it to Gmesh to, for visualization or any other tool or another FreeFem script that can read it and perform the operation. So you can have like a FreeFem code that generates the mesh kind of pre-processing and then another tool, another code that reads it and performs the simulation. So this is, as you can see, the mesh that we had, uh, like, uh, as the output of the trunk function. So you can see how easy it is to save the mesh using one single statement, save mesh. So yeah, these were the examples that I wanted to show you for basic input output operations, IO operations, as well as visualization. I hope you find this video and examples useful. These are things that we use a lot in the future in Talksiders. So see you soon, bye.